Tissues Lecture. The learning objectives for this lecture are to explain how epithelial tissues are grouped according to shape and arrangement of cells, list and briefly discuss the major types of connection, connective and muscle tissue, and list the three structural components of the neuron, and then describe how injured tissue is repaired. Introduction to tissues, there are four main kinds of tissue. There is the epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. Tissues differ from, differ from each other in size and shape of their cells, in the amount and kind of material between the cells, and in the special functions they perform to help maintain the body's health and survival. Epithelial tissues cover the body and lines the body cavities. Cells pack closely together with little matrix and are classified by the shape of the cell. The shapes of the cell can be squamous, cuboidal, columnar, and transitional. They can also be arranged in different orientations. So there is simple, which is a single layer of cells, and then there is stratified, which is many layers of cells. On this set, slide, you can see the different shapes and the orientations. So we have squamous, cuboidal, and columnar. And then our simple orientation is one single layer of each type of the shapes. And then stratified is many layers or multiple layers of each type of cell. Epithelial tissue is, has um, squamous, simple squamous epithelial, which is a single layer of sac-like cells. They transport, for example, absorption is their function. A good example of the simple squamous epithelium is the alveoli in the lungs. Stratified squamous epithelium is several layers of closely packed cells and they protect. Their main function is protection. And for the stratified squamous epithelium, some examples would be skin or mucous membranes. So here's a picture of the simple squamous and simple cuboidal epithelium. It shows the simple squamous epithelium forming tubules by the arrows here, and simple cuboidal epithelium forming the walls of the tubules. So the walls here. Stratified squamous epithelium, there are many layers of cells as you can see. And at, as you get towards the top, especially in the B image, the cells become flattened in the outer layers. Epithelial tissue, simple columnar epithelium, columnar cells are arranged in a single layer. They line the stomach or the intestines and they contain mucus producing goblet cells. They specialize in absorption, so they are frequently seen in the stomach intestines and some areas of respiration and reproductive organs. Stratified transitional epithelium are found in body areas such as the urinary bladder that stretch up to 10 layers of roughly cuboidal shaped cells that distort to squamous shaped when they are stretched. So here is a picture of the simple columnar epithelium, oblong nuclei, and striated borders. And as you can see here, the goblet cells are apparent. Pseudostratified epithelium, each cell touches the basement membrane. It, usual location is the trachea. Many layers of the epithelium cells are of all different shapes, so each 
Each cell touches the basement membrane, so the initial lying membrane down here. Stratified transitional epithelium lines the urinary bladder and many layers of epicells from of various shapes and forms, as you can see here. And some cells can be binucleated. Simple cuboidal epithelium often specialize in the secretion activity. Cuboidal cells may be grouped into glands and may, sec may have secretion ducts directly into blood or the body surface. Examples of secretions would be saliva, digestive juices, and other hormones. Simple cuboidal epithelium, as you can see, the secreting cells arrange themselves in single-like branches or tubules and that open up to the surface, and so there is more contact with the surface so they can secrete those mucuses, sweat, hormones, or anything else that they need to secrete. An example of this, and this is actually a picture of the stomach lining where it's secreting digestive juices. Connective tissue, the most abundant tissue in the body, most widely distributed tissue in the body, and multiple types, appearances, and functions, and it's re relatively few cells in the intracellular matrix. Some examples of connective tissue are skin, membranes, muscles, bones, nervous, in all internal organs. Types of connective tissue are areolar, which is glue that holds organs together. It's the most widely distributed. Oedipus or fat tissue are, is the lipid storage and it, that is the primary function. Fibrous are bundles of strong collagen fibers. An example would be a tendon. They have great strength and flexibility, but no stretch. Bone, which is a matrix of calcified and functions to support and helps with protection. Cartilage consists of a grist-like gel. They consist of chondrocytes, which is the basic cell of the cartilage. And then blood, which is the matrix fluid, it functions and its function is for transportation and protection. We have hemopoietic tissue, which forms blood cells and lymphatic system cells, which is part of the blood type connective tissue. Here are some pictures of the connective tissues, so the fat cells, they are large storage spaces as you can see. We also have fibrous connective tissue. Normally the fibrous connective tissue is white, this one is stained for visibility. Bone, which you can see the osteon here. And then we also have cartilage, which you can see the matrix and then the chondrocytes located within. Blood. Blood has a special matrix, which this is a picture of a human blood smear. We have a white blood cell, which usually when they are stained are purplish in color. And then you have the red blood cells, which are much, much smaller than the white blood cells. The liquid matrix in the background is the plasma. There are type, three types of different muscle tissue. There is skeletal muscle tissue, cardiac muscle tissue, and smooth muscle tissue. Skeletal muscle tissue attaches to the bone is also called striated and, and is voluntary. It's controlled by the voluntary center of our brain. Striations are apparent when viewing under a microscope. Cardiac muscle is 
also called striated but is involuntary and composes the heart wall mainly and ordinarily cannot be controlled. Smooth muscle tissue is also um, is called non-striated or visceral type tissue and is involuntary, has no cross striations and is found in the blood vessels and other tube shaped organs such as in the digestive or respiratory tracts. So here are some pictures of skeletal and cardiac muscle. As you can see the skeletal muscle heavy dark striations within and you can see the nuclei within the muscle. The cardiac muscle has lighter striations as you can see and then they have what's called little intercalated discs or bands um, which is only present in cardiac muscle. Smooth muscle is Pictured here, as you can see, very limited type striations. The nuclei are centrally placed within the muscle fibers. Nervous tissue. The function is rapid communication between body structures and control of body functions. The neurons conduct cells. They are functional in conducting units with special connecting and supporting cells called glia. Nervous tissue is pictured here. You can see the nervous cell body, the axon, the dendrites, and then the glial cells, which are these little dots. The neurons are all, all neurons have a cell body and two types of processes, an axon and a dendrite. Axons are one and they carry nerve impulses away from the cell body. Dendrites are one or more and carry nerve impulses towards the cell body. Glia and noroglia support and connect cells. Tissue repair, usually accomplished by means of regeneration of tissue. Epithelial and connective tissues regenerate easily. Muscle and nervous tissues have very limited abilities to repair themselves. Typically, the tissues that have the greatest capacity to regenerate are epithelial and connective, and all tissues, do all tissues regenerate? The answer is really unknown, however, nervous tissue has limited capacity. The younger you are, the more likely you are to regenerate nervous tissue. Keloids, so keloids are a type of scar. So a scar is a dense fibrous mass of cells that replace normal tissue during healing. A keloid is an unusually thick scar that develops in the lower layers of the skin. So not at the surface, but at the lower layers. And as you can see, it develops a protrusion as pictured here. Typically, these keloids usually develop or have a higher instance in people who are African American for some reason. That is part of their, within their genetic makeup that when they get a cut or a scar from a surgery, they have a higher instance of developing a keloid.